Hi, someone asked me to do a five minute video on the first five minutes of the universe. And I thought, wow, could I talk about the first five minutes of the universe in five minutes? The answer is probably not, but but it's a very interesting time. So I thought I'd give some discussion of what our picture of the first five minutes of the universe is. Now, I should say I'm not going to start at t equals zero because we don't know what happened at t equals zero. I want to even start after this early period when we think the universe expanded by a huge factor, a factor of a million, billion, billion, billion in a time frame that's just so small. I want to start after that period when the universe was about probably about one ten millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second old. If you extrapolate back our whole observed universe to that time, it was the size of a baseball. Everything in our observable universe was contained in a region the size of a baseball, which itself is just almost impossible to visualize. I wrote a whole book about it almost. Uh, uh, you were taking all 100 billion galaxies, each containing 100 billion stars, and cramming that material together into the size of a baseball. In, in, in a region the size of what, what would now be a single atom, there's more mass than to be in New York City. Uh, I mean, it's just unbelievable to imagine that. But it's even worse, or even more unbelievable, because uh, remember from an earlier... Uh, um, uh, episode of five minute physics that the ratio of, of radiation density to matter density goes down over time. In fact, it goes, the ratio in, it goes as temperature. So if you go back to those earlier times, it turns out if you take all of the matter in our universe, 100 billion galaxies, each containing 100 billion stars, compress that, all of that matter, which was then at that point really hot and, and, and dense and comprised only one part in a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of all the energy in the universe. Namely, the total amount of energy contained in that region was a million, billion, billion times bigger than all the energy in the universe, observable universe now. That's because the radiation has done work as the universe expanded. So everything we see was an infinitesimally small component of all of the incredibly intense amount of energy in that baseball-sized universe. Okay. Then we, we go from 10 to the minus 34 seconds and the universe expands and cools and expands and cools by a, uh, for what seems like an eternity at that point, um, down to a time when the universe was a millionth of a millionth of a second old. I think the size of our universe around then was maybe around the size of our, our solar system. Um, I haven't worked out the number. Somewhere between the Earth and the solar system, I think. The, um, but a millionth of a millionth of a second, something else happened. Uh, now, between the time the universe was uh, uh, a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second old in that time, something else happened. Because initially, as we've talked about before, there were equal numbers of particles of, of, of matter and antimatter. And sometime between that early time when the universe was the size of a baseball and that later time when, say, the universe was somewhere around the size of the Earth or something like that, the there was a slight asymmetry between matter and antimatter arose. And we've talked about that. We, we have ideas for when it may have, how it may have happened. But that slight asymmetry meant that eventually all the particles of matter would annihilate with all the particles of antimatter, leaving only matter left over. But, but at the time of the universe, the millionth of a millionth of a second old, there's still lots of matter and antimatter around. There's that slight asymmetry, but you wouldn't notice it if you were looking at it. You'd, you'd just see it's equal amounts of matter and antimatter in the radiation. At a millionth of a millionth of a second, the, uh, something very important happened. The electric force and the weak force, which before that time were part of a unified theory uh, and, and were, lo looked very much the same, began to look different. And that's the point where the Higgs field that we've now discovered condensed in space and gave mass to particles. Before that, particles basically had no mass. And when the Higgs field condenses... Not only do those forces begin to look different, but particles begin to have mass. And of course, that and, and the quarks and electrons begin to have mass, different masses because of their couplings to Higgs. The universe then evolves down from a millionth of a millionth of a second old down to about the time when it's about a millionth of a second old, when it's cool enough for the quarks, which otherwise have been moving around freely, more or less, to begin to get confined into what the particles we now know neutrons and protons. And after about a millionth of a second into the history of the universe, the, the, the 
the universe consisted of no longer free quarks, but neutrons and protons and electrons, and that time neutrinos and, and radiation. And from about a millionth of a second to a millionth to, to a, from about a millionth of a second to a second, the um, electric forces and the weak forces are in equilibrium. They're, they're, they're so dense that particles are interacting, and neutrons and protons are interacting by the weak force. So a, a, a proton can, can combine with an electron to form a neutron and, an, and, and, um, and a neutrino, and uh, neutrons plus positrons can combine together and, and, and produce a, uh, a proton and an anti know, All those interactions are happening, and they're in equilibrium. Now, neutrons are a little bit heavier than protons. So as the temperature goes down well below the mass of neutrons and protons, down to a time when the temperature was about one thousandth the mass of a neutron or a proton. A neutron or proton have a mass of, of one giga electron volt, so we're talking about around one mega electron volt. Um, they're still in equilibrium, and that means because uh, the neutrons are heavier than the proton, in equilibrium, heavier particles are less abundant than lighter particles because there's not enough energy to create them. So already the number of, neutrino, of neutrons is falling below the number of protons. But around the time when the universe is about a second old, when the, when the energy, the average energy available to particles is about a million electron volts, the weak interactions freeze out. And the, the reactions that change neutrons into protons and vice versa no longer can keep up with the fact that particles are moving apart faster than they can interact. And that means that the neutron number, the proton number, remains fixed, except for the fact that neutrons are unstable, as I've also talked about, and they begin to decay. And if nothing else happened, there'd be no neutrons left in the history of the universe. But what happens, however, is that the neutrons and the protons um, while the weak interactions that convert them between each other are, are out of equilibrium, the strong interaction between neutrons and protons and um, it's such that neutrons and protons can hit together and via their weak interaction every now and then combine together. So a neutron and a proton combine together to form the nucleus of heavy hydrogen called deuterium. And then every now and then a deuterium uh, nucleus will hit another deuterium nucleus and form the nucleus of even heavier hydrogen called tritium. And tritium can, can hit deuterium and form helium-3, the light isotope of helium, and eventually get helium-4. And what you find over the first five minutes in the history of the universe is that the universe went from a period of having neutrons and protons, fewer neutrons and protons, and electrons and positrons and neutrinos because the temperature is still high enough that electrons and positrons are still relativistic. And in that time, until the universe becomes five minutes old, the temperature cools, so all the electrons annihilate with the po positrons, and the slight excess of electrons are left over. And at the end of five minutes, you have only electrons, and a background of neutrinos, and photons. And now you've got hydrogen, which is single protons, and all the free neutrons have gone away. The ones that haven't uh, um, decayed are now in helium. So 75% of the mass of the universe is in hydrogen, of the mass of normal matter is in hydrogen, 25% in helium, and a little bit, a little few extra uh, nuclear reactions went on that created a little bit of lithium, one part in 10 to the 10th of the universe is lithium. But at five minutes, all of the building blocks were there. Hydrogen, helium, electrons, radiations, and some neutrinos. And basically from that time onward, nothing much happened for about the first 100,000 years in the history of the universe. And in fact, there were still no neutral atoms because the temperature was hot enough that, that electrons couldn't combine with, with, um, hydro with protons or the nucleus of helium. So I sh really should have said we have the nucleus of helium, the nucleus of of, of hydrogen, but there was no neutral matter. But nevertheless, all the building blocks were there and everything was ready to ultimately allow a universe that would produce stars, galaxies, stars, planets, and people. So that's the first five minutes in the history of the universe that someone asked me to give you. And I should say something about that time. It's taken me almost 10 minutes to talk about it. But that's not surprising. Because the interesting thing is, things were so dense and so many interactions happening that you can work out 
that more particle interactions happened in the first second in the history of the universe than will happen in the entire future history of the universe. So really, the first few minutes in the history of the universe were the most interesting time, and now it's kind of boring. And I hope that wasn't boring for you, though. That was a special five-minute physics. Hope you enjoyed it.